Today I'm reacting to the watches worn by superheroes. Avengers. Do you know the Avengers? I know Wolverine. A lot of you guys asked in the last video what this actually is. This is the Orbit Winder from IFL Watches. Absolute cracker. If you're interested in that winder, the link is in the description. F***ing class. I trusted you. Spider-Man. He looks like a young kid. That's a nice watch. Tom Holland, Spider-Man. Were there not multiple Spider-Mans? Like a different actor Spider-Man. People like this guy. He looks quite cool. Like Nice Cartier Santos. Guys, I have this same watch here in this building, right here, right now. I'm gonna grab it, but be warned, it's f***ing shit. This watch is good, but the watch I have here is shit. La, 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 la. Open up. Yes, done. This is exactly the same watch as that. The only thing is, this is completely iced out with aftermarket f***ing bullshit diamonds. It's shit. The Cartier Santos is arguably the first ever wristwatch made as a wristwatch. Prior to 1904, we've seen watches on wrists. Usually, it would be pocket watches attached on leather straps. The Cartier Santos was made specifically as a wristwatch in 1904. The version that we see here is a previous generation of the Cartier Santos. I'm not a big fan of this version. However, the new generation, I absolutely love. The case size is really, really thin and super slick. And I think Cartier really hit a home run with that watch. The watch that Tom Holland is wearing here values between four and $6,000. Let's f***ing spin this around the orbit. Holy f***. Being Spider-Man pays off, mate. That is really, really nice. What you see here is a Patek Philippe Aquanaut, reference number 5167R. And that, my friend, that is the dog's bollocks. The Patek Philippe Aquanaut was introduced in 1997, and that was a shock to the watch world. Such a formal watch brand that made watches with leather straps, with grand complications, made a watch with a rubber strap. That was unacceptable. And the watch wasn't popular when it was introduced. People didn't understand what Patek was doing. Today, this is one of Patek's most popular watches. In the late 90s, smart casual became a thing. Wearing a suit without a tie or a jacket on a jean, smart casual became a real thing. Patek Philippe saw that and led the watch industry. Patek Philippe introduced a sports watch on a rubber strap. Every reference number of a Patek Philippe watch ends with a letter for the metal used of the watch. The letter G stands for white gold, J for Japan stands for yellow gold, A stands for steel, P stands for platinum, and then the letter R stands for rose gold. The Patek Philippe 5167R that Tom Holland is wearing here is valued between 55 and $60,000. And that for fucking throwing a few weds. Who's this guy? This is Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Is it really bad that I've never heard of Doctor Strange? This guy played in some really good movies. His name is Benedict Cumberbatch. What, what, is, what is his superpower? He's a wizard. He's a wizard. So why is he then called Doctor Strange? He was a doctor and then became a wizard. Yeah, that's quite strange. You're full of tricks, wizard. Benedict Cumberbatch. Doctor Strange is wearing something really, really cool. A watch that was produced in the late 40s and made his debut in 1950. Jeje Le Colt Memo Vox. The watch that he currently wears is the Polaris. It's a limited edition of a thousand pieces made in steel, 42 millimeter in diameter. And a really cool feature of this watch, the Memo Vox, is the voice of memory. This is an alarm watch. It's a watch that you can set at a certain time and it will ring the f out of your wrist. He wears it with pride. He wants to show the watch. And I think this is definitely a watch to be proud of. Reference number 3098670. class. This watch values between fifteen and seventeen thousand dollars. And for people that want to know that what I have on my wrist, I have a 1982 vintage Rolex Daytona reference number 6265 on the Jubilee bracelet. F me that's watch porn. Why do I feel that I have skipped a chapter of my childhood? Because I have no idea who this is. Thor. I've heard the name Thor, but I'm more interested in that woman. Who is that? 
That's Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. F me, she's unbelievable. Chris Hemsworth. I just wanted to say that must be a brand deal. Every time I see a modern tech hoyer, I just think it must be a brand deal. It's a lovely looking watch, but again, it is being worn by people that are getting paid to wear these watches. This watch is the coolest thing Tech Hoyer has done in forever. Because in 2016, Tech Hoyer asked their fan base to choose their favorite Outavia watch. I think they were able to choose between 15 or 20 models. Absolutely insane. And in 2017, Tech Hoyer relaunched the Outavia. That was a very cool move. You can pick up the watch that Chris is wearing here between three and four thousand dollars. He didn't pay for it like. Is that Thor again? Ow. I think the lens is dirty. Sorry lens. His name is Loki. Tom Hiddleston. Tissot is not really a luxury watch brand, but I do like the fact Tissot is more accessible. They're an old watchmaker with a damn incredible history. I think it's a very good starters watch brand. You get what you pay for, basically. Failure for money, 100%. Do you think I would stand a chance with Scarlett Johansson? I doubt it. Why am I not handsome enough? She's married. Everything has a expiry date. This is a good moment for you guys to finally start following us on Instagram because we're gonna do something absolutely insane. Something with a giveaway. Here is the Pride and Pinion thing. Can I have it on my hand, please? Yes, thank you. At Pride and Pinion, follow us now. Scarlett Johansson, that is so cool to see. This is the Rolex Datejust. 31 millimeter reference number 278273. I like that, that's sexy. I really, really like bigger watches on women as well. A bit oversized and a bit with a loose bracelet. It looks the dog's bollocks. Two bollocks and a dog. It's a watch that we rarely see on the Oyster bracelet. You normally see this configuration with the Jubilee bracelet. This actual Rolex is valued between 14 and $16,000. And it features a factory diamond set dial. Fair play, Scarlet. I'll give you my phone number as well, if the expiry date ever happens. What am I looking at? This guy is called Star Lord. What the f Where is Batman? Where is Superman? I have never heard of these Star Lord and Loki and what the f Hey, remember when I talked about Tom Holland's Carche Santos and I told you that I prefer the modern version? That is the modern version of the Carche Santos with a bracelet you can detach. You can put a leather strap on that and it's very, very well done. Really, really great engineering. It's reference number WGSA007. We don't see many of those watches about. This is quite rare. This Carche Santos is valued between forty-two and $45,000. Chris Pratt, you are number two in the Avengers watch game. Tom Holland is still ahead. Dr. Banner, now might be a really good time for you to get angry. I'm always angry. I know an Avenger, I know the Hulk. What was that other guy with the A on his head? Captain America. I've heard of Captain America. Harry Winston, overpriced bullshit. That's what Harry Winston is. Harry Winston makes jewelry and diamonds and all sorts of things. That is the Second biggest waste of your money, Harry Winston watches. I actually expected the Hulk to wear a Hulk or to wear something f***ing cool. A G-Shock, like God Shock, not Harry Winston f***ing bullshit. I'm actually disappointed here, Mark Ruffalo. Just move on, it's not even worth talking about overpriced bullshit. That is America's ass. Chris Evans, Moblock. Did you guys save the worst for last? Just no. Why is this? I've seen good watches, right? But now I need to make a choice. What's worse, Mont Blanc or Harry Winston? I want to skip this. This is shit. This is fucking shit. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. Elizabeth Olsen. Her name is Vonda Maximoff. I have never heard of these figures. This is a Chanel, this is a Chanel G12. Complete ceramic, an automatic watch should be in the bin. Elizabeth Olsen, your Chanel is shit. Wearing handbag of Chanel, not a watch of Chanel. Harry Winston, Mont Blanc, Chanel, you really kept everything to last, didn't you? The Avengers are not superheroes, they're super plonkers. And what are we getting now, a Hublot?
So now he's dead. Paul Bettany, vision. I'm so f***ing happy it's not a f***ing Hublot. Oh my god. God is great. Really cool to see this Rolex Day Day. 36 millimeter in solid rose gold. This is not something we see very often. This is the reference number 118205. And it's such a cool dial. The presidential bracelet and the black Arabic numeral dial. This watch is not in production anymore. The bezel is domed instead of fluted. A very rare configuration. This Rolex Daydate is valued significantly higher than the yellow gold version. This got to do with the rarity of this model, this version and this reference number. The value of this watch sits between 30 and 35 thousand dollars. Fuck me, I love that watch. Although you may be dead and there's no vision anymore, your watch game is on point my friend. Well done. Cracker of a watch.